Hey y'all and welcome to Cypress Homestead. I'm Zach. And I'm Jim. And today we are going to talk about the must-have top five vegetables that you need to be growing in your garden this year. What, how, and why. So we kind of like doing this top five because we know a lot of people are working in smaller spaces. Mm -hmm. And so when you're in a smaller space gardening, you really want to make sure that you're getting all the money that you can with whatever it is that you're growing. And when I'm talking about money, I'm talking about benefits, yields, um, hardiness, different stuff like that, things that you're going to like tried and true, you're going to get a good harvest out of. Yeah. And if you're just starting out with gardening, which we hope that you are from following us, then it can be extremely overwhelming yes. when you start going through that list of things that you can grow in your zone and you're like, oh my goodness, there's no way I can do all that in one year. Yeah. So we like to just condense it down, just throw in the big bang ones, the things that you can preserve and harvest and have for your whole year until you garden the next year. Yeah. And I would say before we start jumping into the list is that there's our list was created for de many different factors. The number one being, though, the amount of food that you'll be able to put back and the different varieties that you can with one specific vegetable. Um, and we'll get in more detail with that. Um, the second piece is toughness slash easiness to grow. So we picked some stuff that weren't overly difficult to grow. Um, also stuff that are a little bit more bug resistant, potentially stuff that you're going to have a, a good success. Because the one thing we want you to do is be successful. Yes. One thing I do want to throw in is this list has nothing to do with herbs. Mm -hmm. um, we've done separate videos on that and we will continue to do separate videos in the future, but we didn't add herbs to this because we're specifically talking about vegetables to grow. Yep. However, if you are gardening for your first time or your millionth time, always have herbs in your garden. Yep. And we have a whole playlist of canning and or gardening and greenhouse uh, videos. And in there you'll find a lot of our Herb talks. Yep. Okay, we're starting at the very top. Number one on our list is green beans. Green beans are our number one vegetable that you need to be growing in your garden. Now, green beans aren't the easiest thing to grow in your garden because they are very bug attractable. <laughs> Might have just made a word up there, but they, they very much attract all of the bugs. Yep. Soft-sided, hard-sided, aphids, you name it. They're probably going to be coming after your green beans, but there's stuff that you can do to try to prevent that. One is definitely going to be crop rotation. That's going to help a lot, moving them around, keeping them guessing. If you keep planting your green beans in the same spot every single year, you're probably going to get less and less yields and the bugs are going to come quicker. So that's the first thing that you can do. The second piece is going to be make sure that you're using diametaceous earth, DE, BT for your soft sided bugs, and then make sure that you're getting that neem oil on there for all those little aphids. If you can stay consistent with using some of these, uh, pest resistant, um, organic, I'm trying to like not say the words that are chemical because they're not chemical and I don't want you to, they are organic mm -hmm. material that are, is going to prevent pests from ta attacking your plants, then you will have a good yield out of them. Um, they're, other than that, they are very easy to grow themselves. They don't need a whole lot of attention. Um, now we do put fish Fertilizer. It, what do we call it? Fertilizer? Emulsion. I, emulsion. That's the word I was trying to look for. Fish emulsion. Um, weekly, every Sunday night, we do the whole garden in that, and that's just going to help give them a little boost. But other than that, green beans are overall fairly easy to grow as long as you can keep the bug pressure down. So now that you know how to grow them, which ones do we like to grow? Now, when it comes to green beans, one thing that we've noticed as gardeners is what works in one area might, it probably won't work in another. So it's going to be like a trial and error. One of the best things you can do is try to talk to some of the local farmers around you and get some of their seeds mm -hmm. um, because stuff that's growing in there is going to be already tried and true in your area and you know they're going to do well. The ones we like, um, there is a Blue Lake bush bean uh, that we like a whole lot. We love the Kentucky pole bean um, and there's a difference. You can grow bush beans or pole beans. So pole beans, you're going to need some kind of arch, some kind of trellis so for them to climb up. Those are much more easy to harvest. You, can, you don't have to be bent down and done them. Bush beans are going to grow like little mini bushes, and they're just going to be filled with all kinds of green beans. Um, so you got to pick which one works best for your gardening. Um, but I would say probably those are our top varieties that we grow here. Yeah. Now switching over to after you've harvested them, how do you preserve them and in what ways? Yeah, so one of the reasons that we chose green beans as the number one is because of the preserving quality. So I know a lot of you eat green beans. I mean, that's like the number one vegetable that's thrown on a plate for a side or for Thanksgiving, Christmas, all the holidays. They're such a, a good hearty side to have. So what we do with our green beans is we mostly pressure can them in pint form. So not quarts, we do pints because that's usually a big enough serving for our family of four and sometimes jet. So that works out well. The next step we'll do is freeze them. 
because we buy a lot of frozen green beans or we used to when we were going to the store. We would always go to the frozen section, pick out the frozen green beans. They're so easy to throw in a pan with all your stuff and cook them that way. And the third way is freeze drying. So we love to freeze dry our green beans and most of our vegetables. And we'll either keep them separate or we'll put them with other vegetables and call them mixed vegetables like you buy at the store in cans or frozen. And that's a wonderful way to do it. So every probably three to four nights out of the week for the whole winter time, we are always grabbing those green beans for our family to eat. They taste so good. They're still fresh straight from the garden. You can tell that they're not store-bought. And it's just a wonderful side to have on your shelf. Yeah, absolutely. And the only two things that I would add is one, they hold their consistency. So yes. you still have, they're not just mush. Um, they, they still taste like you just picked them and then you, you boiled them and cooked them in. Um, the second thing you can do too, which she didn't mention, it's because we don't do it a whole lot, is dilly beans. Yeah. So you can actually pickle them up. Um, dilly beans are a great little snack that you can have, a nice little healthy snack. But because, like she said, our family eats green beans as a side so much, we usually just we just need to can them all. Yeah. We need to can all we have. The treats are just gonna have to wait. But there is many, many options, like she said, and that's why, number one, it's our top one, and it gives you so much food for a long time. Yeah. All right, so that's number one. Make sure that you got your green beans going. Oh, before we move on, you can, it, depending on your zone, you can do multiple rounds of green beans, mm -hmm. too. So, like, if in our pea area, or uh, where our cauliflower and stuff are, the first thing that we usually put in there is green beans because they grow pretty rapidly, yeah. um, pretty quick. And I would usually stick with the bush bean varieties when you're doing that and just throw them in there, keep growing them. All right, enough with green beans. Moving on to number two. This one's gonna pack you a bunch of food. So it's one of those that are gonna give you calories, you're gonna have food. If you needed to have a hearty meal just to give you pumped up and this is all you had, it's a good one, and it's why it's number two on our list. Yep, so that is sweet potatoes or regular potatoes. Yes. So when we started out gardening, we did regular potatoes. We mm -hmm. would grow like three to four different varieties. We would put them in the ground, hill them up, harvest them. We loved them. We would can them. We would um, eat them fresh. We would store them in the basement and then use them throughout the year. But as our years of gardening went on, we realized that we actually enjoy growing sweet potatoes more than potatoes. And, and eating the, them too. Really. Yes, and eating them. And um, preserving them because yeah. it's easier. They seem to last longer. But the number one reason is because of the pest. So growing potatoes can become extremely difficult because the potato beetles will come and they will take over and then it's hard to even want to harvest them when you have to go out there and play with potato beetles, spiders, grubs, what? all the things. You know, they seem to sometimes rot in the ground for us and I think that's because we're in a very high moisture area. It's always wet here. Um, it's more like a rainforest than it is yeah. in like drier areas. So that became difficult for us. So we quickly switched to sweet potatoes and they seem to hold up a, a whole lot longer for us, whether you're just putting them in cold storage or we can them or freeze them. They're a wonderful addition. They're sweet. Everybody loves sweet potatoes, whether you're mm. going to mash them up or just eat them plain. And um, the prettiness of it too. Yeah. You don't have the pests, you don't have all the bugs, at least we haven't yet. That's something that we hope we don't come across, but also the beautiful of it. So sweet potatoes will vine out so beautiful in your garden and everybody will be like, what is that yeah. beautiful vine, that beautiful flower that you have growing? And you can tell them it's sweet potatoes, it's actually food. So it has two purposes, beauty and food. Yeah, and it looks like a waterfall mm -hmm. when it comes out of there. And she basically covered it all. You know, just pick which one, you can try growing both, see which yeah. one does better in your area. Um, always growing both if you want to. I mean, there's no problem in that. We just, for storage unit wise, we pick one and for areas like that. Um, so that's why we're kind of moving to the sweet potato area. Two things I wanted to mention. One, like she said, it, it's not very bug resistant or it is very bug resistant, it seems so far. But second that, they're also very easy to grow. Um, like they don't need a whole lot of watering. Um, they just don't need a whole lot of attention at all. Um, you know, it's not like tomatoes where you're having to keep tying up or pruning or doing stuff like that. Um, you just plant them and let them rock and roll and you get some really big yields out of them. But the one way that I, that we agreed that this was number two on our list is say you're not in a position to grow meat right now, right? Like you, you're, you just can't do the meat animals, but you can do the garden. If it came down and they said, Hey, you know what? You want to stay home for a month. Well, one awesome dish that you can do is you can put your, we call them potato bowls mm -hmm. and it, whether it's a sweet potato or a baked potato, it doesn't matter. You can put that in the bottom of your bowl and then put whatever you want on top of it. And that is a full blown meal. Yeah. And you know, the primary aspect of that was the potato and you're full. You've got the calories that you needed. And so it is a good prepper meal. It is yes. a good prepper vegetable to have and make sure that you keep that 
in your pantry. Um, we've also, she kind of touched on it, but I did want to emphasize, in our opinion, sweet potatoes store, cold store, so much better than potatoes. Yeah. I hear people talking about how they store their potatoes in bins, and I'm like, they got to be lying or something, because yeah. these things, I mean, dark, they dry, cool, keep. they don't keep. But number one and number two was green beans and potatoes, right? My favorite thing that Jen ever cans is green beans and potatoes mm -hmm. in the same quart jar together. It is fantastic. So yeah. if you're going these two, I would go ahead and tell you, go ahead and plan on canning your potatoes. And if you really want to add it in, mix it with the green beans. Yep. It's really good. All right, number three. This one I think is probably number one on almost everybody's list, but it's down to number three because, I don't know, we, just green beans and sweet potatoes and potatoes are definitely above it in our opinion. Number three. Tomatoes. Tomatoes. <laughs> So the reason tomatoes is number three, and the reason it's on our list in general is not specific. So with the potatoes, you know, that was the primary ingredient in your recipes, right? Tomatoes, in our opinion, give you vers what's versatility. It? Versatility, I was gonna say. Versatility in a lot of different food. So you can just have just straight tomatoes, right? You can make tomato sandwiches. You can put them on sandwiches to just spice it up. You can have just tomatoes sliced with a little salt and pepper on it. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can just eat tomatoes. Our biggest way that we like to do it is with stews yeah. and soups and enhancing other meals. Yeah. Um, because to be honest with you, I'm really not that huge of a fan of just a sliced tomato. Yeah. She I, is. I love them. Yeah. yeah. She loves a good tomato sandwich. I've just never been huge on it. However, I love chili. I love vegetable soup. I love stews. Spaghetti. I love all the spaghetti. Um, all that stuff that the main base is tomatoes. Yeah. And so when it comes to a prepper pantry, it's always nice to have different items to choose from. It's not the same thing over and over and over again. So you can make your sauces, you can make your chili, you can make all the different soups, the spaghetti sauce that she makes, stuff like that, because that's gonna give you an option to say, what if we just have rice? Mm -hmm. Well, I can get a little, at least a different flavor yeah. many times of the week. So tomatoes are gonna be great to grow. Tomatoes are gonna be one of your more hands-on plants to grow. They're a little needy, yeah. Um, but there's a lot of different varieties out there that you can grow. There's determinants and indeterminates, and just briefly what that means, determinate tomatoes, there's a determined amount of tomatoes that are gonna grow on that plant. So you don't wanna prune it. You don't wanna cut it back. You wanna just let it grow because every time you cut, you're taking away tomatoes that you could have potentially had. Indeterminate means if you keep pruning and keep taking care of it, it's gonna keep growing and growing and growing and growing, and it's gonna keep producing tomatoes out of it. Um, there's pros and cons for each one. You know, just kinda look in, Really just trying them both out and seeing what you like best. Um, other than that, there's hybrids, there's heirlooms, there's all kinds of different information that's out there. Um, don't be scared of hybrids. Don't say, mm, that's a bad tomato. I'm not doing hybrids. I'm only doing heirlooms. Again, test out what works best for you because hybrid does not mean G GMO. Hybrid just means it is a hybrid between other tomato varieties to create a different variety. And if you really want me to get into my little conspiracy side of things where an heirloom at some point was probably a hybrid and especially nowadays because we're, we're mixing other heirlooms to make a new heirloom which is a hybrid heirloom you know in a sense but we'll get past that just find tomatoes that you like there's reds there's yellows there's whites there's oranges um all that kind of changes the acidity level um i really like the yellows and orange mm -hmm. tomatoes um the reds it's a little pump a little too yeah. hard on me um but you know that's going to be something that's a personal preference um, and then the biggest thing with that is tomato hornworms. You yeah. know, they're gonna come. Um, you gotta keep them guessing. You gotta stay vigilant. Uh, make sure that you're out there touching your tomatoes, looking at them often, and just keeping those pesty things off there. Yeah, and I'd say it's a, kind of the same route with the green beans. If you're gonna decide to grow tomatoes, go ask your local community what's, mm. you know, the ones that they choose to grow. Every state, every zone, every community kind of has their favorite tomatoes that yep. do well in your area. So just ask around. I'm sure you can get them at your local tractor supplier, your local feed store co-op, and then plant those because you know that they're already gonna be set up for success. Absolutely, and just a couple, of, while she was talking, I was thinking some of our favorite varieties. Our number one canning tomato is Bonnie's Best. Mm -hmm. um, we love that one, it's a big red tomato. Uh, we like growing that one a lot. I would say our favorite eater is a Kentucky beefsteak. Or, a, or pink ox heart. Or pink ox heart. <laughs> um, both of those are really good. Kentucky beefsteak is a yellow one, um, and it's big and it's meaty. Pink ox heart, man, they just hold. And they're good. They, they're really good. Now, if you do grow those, those are late guys. So your tomatoes, you're gonna see like all these other plants get fruit and everything's popping. 
Pink hog starts more later in the year. Now, they really focus on themselves as a plant first before they start having little baby tomatoes. <laughs> and so just keep that in mind if you do grow them. Um, and some other ones we like is Honest Nowhere, mm -hmm. um, Pineapple. I think that's probably kind of our top ones. And our favorite cherry tomato is Roselle. Yes. Um, it is delicious. They're the best. We don't grow any other cherries because there's yeah. just nothing going to beat it. All right. Got through the top three. Now it's time to talk about number four. Yeah. And number then, four is kind of hard. Yeah. Because we wanted to throw a whole lot of other things in here with it. It's a difficult list, too. we narrowed it down to just kind of one, but then we'll just throw the other ones in, too, so you grow them all. <laughs> but that's lettuce. <laughs> so lettuce is something that is so easy to grow. Even if you are not going to grow anything else in your garden or you've never gardened before, you can throw it in a bucket. You can throw it in a trash bin, like he calls his, when he grows it in. You can throw it in anything. You can get a planter from the Dollar Tree and throw it in that. Just make sure you have holes on the bottom. It's so easy to grow and you can grow it all year round, whether that's indoors, whether it's on your balcony, in a greenhouse, in a raised bed. It's so easy. It's very simple. The bugs will hardly come after it. If they do, replant it because it's so fast and yep. quick. And if it gets too cold outside to where you're freezing, you can throw just a little bitty tarp over it. He's done a whole video on that. So you'll have to go watch that and the whole ins and outs of growing lettuce. But salad is one of those things that most families are going to the store every week and they're buying heads of lettuce they're buying the spring mix that comes in those plastic tubs um, they're getting romaine hearts whatever it is because every family loves to have a salad and it's good for you so why not try to grow it yourself and then clip it and cut it and then let it grow back and just always have that fresh salad and kind of the other things that i wanted to throw in with that are just all the brassicas broccoli yeah. cabbage cauliflower all of them because they're all easy to grow and they're all easy to keep the bugs off of if you just pay attention to it, keep your netting on, stay vigilant and don't give up. Yeah, and I think also uh, to add to that is uh, starting them early. Mm -hmm. Like I think we're uh, in our minds, we're like, there's no way something will grow in January, no matter yeah. where we are. Number ask as well, you start them inside, you stick it outside, gonna hang out yeah. just as long as you have that plastic over it and then that's before the bugs come so they're just, they're getting good and established and then right when it starts clipping and getting warm that's when they're ready to harvest and they're like ah, beat you bugs yeah um, but I, like she said i always love things that we can grow that we get to eat off of all the time yeah. like we get to clip it it grows back clip it grows back it's like zinnias right the more you clip them the better they get the bigger they get and the bushier they get um and it's just uh, so easy to grow it's fantastic it's one of those beautiful things that um, I really, I like, I just enjoy growing yeah. myself. Um, it's a lot of fun and it's really pretty. You, I call that uh, trash can the, the salad bowl mix, you know, cause it basically is. I got romaine in there. We got butter crunch. We got spinach. We got what you're buying from a store. Yeah. Um, and it's just really nice to grow and fun to grow. Now for the preserving piece of lettuce, that's basically non-existent. You're not going to go preserving lettuce. It's just not going to hold up and it's not going to turn out to be what you want it to be when you go to harvest or when you go to eat it. But it is one of those things that you can grow all year round. So there's really no reason to try and preserve it when you can just keep it going. And even if that certain plot that you have starts to run out and it's not looking so great, like I said, just start it again. Start in a different pot or somewhere else and just keep it going so that you don't have to worry about preserving or buying it from the store. And then with the cabbage and collar, collar, cabbage, oh. cauliflower and broccoli, <laughs> those three things can be preserved, whether it's frozen, um, freeze dried, and eat them fresh, fermented. Mm -hmm. Fermented's really good. Just pickling all those things is good. But also the piece of those where you can eat all of their leaves, their stems, they become also like lettuce because the leaves are very edible and very good as well. So even if you, you know, take the whole head off, don't throw the rest of the plant away. Keep right. the leaves and eat them and turn that into your salad. That's what we do. Um, mm -hmm. Or we'll cook them down to make greens, southern greens. And either way, they're really, really good. Absolutely. And the only thing that I'm going to add in here too, because technically it can be counted as lettuce, Microgreens. Mm -hmm. So microgreens are basically the sprouts of a lot of different stuff. Um, Haas has a whole kit of different microgreens that you can have, um, but that's stuff you can grow inside all year too, yeah. just like lettuce. And so it's actually good. We like actually having microgreens on top of our lettuce. Yeah. It's little baby sprouts of just different things, like I said, and those are awesome to grow. Um, and they never even have to see outside. Mm -hmm. All right, we have came to the end of our list on number five. This one was tough, y'all. It was tough. It was tough to pick. We argued about this one for a while. We did. I, I won like, though. <laughs> she did win. She did. And I think rightfully so, because it definitely connects to the other top four that we have. Mm -hmm. um, and number five is? Carrots. Carrots. It might seem like an odd one. <laughs> and well, kind of. It's 
the reason I was like, should it be number five is because you need a pretty big space for carrots um, to get like you a year. You grow them in a green stock though. Yes, you can definitely grow them in a green stock. Um, but if you want enough to like have a lot of, you need a pretty good plot that you're growing them because you gotta make one seed, one carrot. That's, that's what you're getting, that's your yield. I like one tomato seed, 50 tomatoes, you know, <laughs> something like that. But the reason carrots made it is because we always keep the mind of preserving and prepper pantry and making sure that you have good hearty food to eat. And carrots are definitely that. Yeah. Um, they're extremely healthy for you. Um, they're dense, so they have a lot of good punch when you eat it. You feel full mm -hmm. after you eat carrots. And the biggest thing is that carrots grew in with everything else. So you can have carrots and green beans and tomatoes and there's a stew all in itself. Uh, and carrots, they also help in different uh, mixed vegetables yeah. that you have. So you can have the carrots and green beans together um, and you can throw them on top of your potato with a little tomato juice and then there's your meal. Uh, tomatoes are, are wow. Carrots. Carrots are not the easiest thing to grow. Yeah. Uh, most people have difficulty at the very beginning, germinating them, getting them to germinate right. Cause I mean, they are just fine. It looks like dust almost and what the seed looks like. That's what we've done. I've done videos about it is doing a trench just sprinkling them bad boys all the way down it once they start popping up that's when we thin mm -hmm. it is too hard to try to put one little seed and space them out appropriately and then hope it germinates so i over over seed and then come back and actually pull those out but you know there's all kinds of different methods we like to keep it as simple as possible and so that's what we do just trench throw them in there let them pop up yeah. um after that pretty bug resistant don't have to worry about that um and i would honestly say once you do just get them up there's not much you have to do. Yeah. It says that's the difficult part. I think my reasoning, so kind of two reasons. So hear me out. I know he's kind of made it sound like they're really difficult to grow and they can be challenging. However, if it's something that you get down one year, then you're going to be set up because yes. you get it and you understand it yeah. and you know what you have to do to grow them. So carrots are always in meals. Like say you go somewhere and you're on a, you know, eating a Southern meal or at your buffet, there's always carrots and they're always good and everybody loves them. And for snacking also, we're always buying raw carrots to snack on or to throw on salads and carrots being root veggies, they're very heavily sprayed. Yeah, They're put into the ground with stuff that we necessarily wouldn't add into our own garden. I'm talking about the ones you buy at the store and they are coated with a waxy substance that is really not good for you. So although they look beautiful at the store and they look, you know, organic and wonderful, they're not. So if it's something that you are eating all of the time, you know, say on Sunday dinners, or for us, it's even more than once a week because yeah. we can our carrots, then it's something to look into growing your own so that you're not buying the nasty stuff from the store. And if not, you know, if you can find them organically and from a good source, not to grow yourself, but then you can can them or freeze dry them. Yeah. And some years that's what we'll do. It just depends on the year, whether we have room for carrots or not. Um, but we'll always get them from a liable source and we always have them on our shelf. So we can carrots and quartz. And along with the green beans, I'm always grabbing green beans and carrots off the shelf to add to our meals as a side every single week, whether that's three to four times a week. And everybody loves them. They're so good. Everybody always yeah. says, where are these carrots from? You know, these are wonderful. They're so good. And I get to tell them they're homegrown right in our garden. And then I get to teach them how to do it. So grow carrots. <laughs> <laughs> grow carrots. <laughs> the only thing I add with the preserving piece, they're great freeze dried as well. Yes. No mess. It's good. You can actually freeze dry the carrots and the green beans together and then throw them in a bag. And then there you go. You got a stew, yeah. you know, a stew that's ready uh, to go for you there. So that would be the only other thing I would add. I think other than that, she pretty much covered it. Um, they're fun to grow too. Mm -hmm. uh, root veggies are just fun to grow yeah. uh, because they're growing. They're doing great. You're not sure what's going on underneath there because you can't physically see it. You sneak one out to see how they're doing. It's just, they're fun to grow. Yeah. Um, and it's just making the space and making it a priority to do so. Some things that weren't on there that might may have surprised you, um, but we have good reason for it because they're more of just fun to, fun things to eat fresh um, rather than the preserving piece. Peppers. Mm -hmm. Peppers were not on our top five list. Um, we have tried preserving them any way that we can, and we're just not a fan of them yeah. coming back. Um, we don't like them really rehydrated from freeze dried. They suck canned. Yeah. I mean, it just turns into yeah. straight mush. Um, and then freezing, they always seem to get freezer burn. But we love them fresh. Yes. That's so, one of the, our favorite things in the summer to eat fresh. Yeah. But you don't have to grow 50 peppers with the idea of preserving them. Right. You just, just get you a few plants to eat fresh. Exactly. And so if you want to make salsa with your tomatoes, you need to make sure that you have some peppers that can go in there that way. But yeah, peppers only fresh, definitely in our garden, just not in our top five. Um, another thing that wasn't on there was corn. Mm -hmm. um, corn has no nutritional value whatsoever. <laughs> 
but it's good. It's really good. It's really good. Don't get us wrong. We like it, but it's not doing anything really for you. Right. Um, and you might feel full from it, but your body's not getting what it needs from it. So we don't see you wasting the space on that. It is good for animals and feed and stuff like that if you want to grow it. We'll do an honorable mention. Just a little quick honorable mention. And that was all your melons. This was the one that I wanted to I have at number five. Now. No, I told them not what to do. Like the carrot or the uh, corn and the peppers was, I said on why they weren't in there. But if I could slip in a number five A, it would have been the melon area. Watermelons, honeydew, cantaloupe, cantaloupe pumpkins. All that stuff is great freeze dried. It is uh, not very difficult to uh, preserve. And then pumpkins are a natural dewarmer for you and your animals. Um, it's a great thing to have on. You can can up some pumpkin puree, have that in, in your pantry. Um, and it's just great to have. Melons are awesome. And then all that skin and everything's gonna be more food for your animals. They love it. Um, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. So if you have the space, do melons. Even if you just grow a melon patch just for your animals, mm -hmm. it's wonderful. It's a great prepping item yeah. to just have a patch so that say you weren't able to get feed, then you have that food right there to throw to them and it will sustain them. Absolutely. That's, That's all. all. That's all. Bye. <laughs> no, we're kidding. But we have, that is our top five list slash seven list. Or, 15. Let's switch to whatever it is. Um, but there's a lot of good things out there to grow. Let us know down in the comments, what are your top five to grow? Because they're all different. There's no wrong answers. Um, everybody has a reason for why they grow stuff. I, like I love growing oak trees. Mm -hmm. 13. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's definitely not in the top five for different reasons. So let us know your top five down below. Let us know what you're trying to do. Let us know what's been successful for you in your area and your garden, because down below, that's your neighbors. There's people around you that are close to you and they want to know what other people do in their zone. Yeah. So tell them your area, tell them your zone, and then say, this is what I grow and this is why. It's awesome. We love seeing the community mm -hmm. talk. All right, y'all, if you're new around here, hit that subscribe button. We love y'all. Until the next one. Bye. Bye.